Once upon a time, Jews were an us, and there was a clear them. My absolute favorite statistic is that in the New York Jewish population study from about six or seven years ago, a full 5%, so one in 20 Jews in the New York area, had no Jewish parents and did not convert. It seems that the radical breakdown of a coherent notion of Jewish identity is a feature of North American Judaism and no longer a bug. Is there such a thing as common Judaism for Jews in North America? Can there be a consensus Jewish politics? In it? And is that even desirable? For every empty synagogue sanctuary in North America, there's a startup me minion meeting in the basement of a church. I often like to say that we tend to think of the diversity in our community and all of its different hues as waves of change. But as Yehuda so eloquently stated, we're no longer looking at waves, we're in an ocean. <laughs> at some point it became focused on either counting the number of Jews as a response to attempts to annihilate us, uh, where the sort of the end game being, you know, we become the longest running culture at the end of time that has survived and we get the trophy. The Torah is a counter-cultural document. It's speaking to a world that doesn't agree with its main principles. And if we as a people stand up for what we believe is the right thing, even and especially if it's counter our current culture, then I believe what doesn't matter is the numbers, what matters is the message. I think innovative is a word that's thrown around a lot. Um, and I don't think we're really exploring it. Innovative is not a value in and of itself. The question of responsibility. Do I feel responsible for anyone? Or is it just my own personal search for meaning? And I should say, if I get meaning from another place, I will so quickly drop the meaning that you are providing me. Like, if, if, you know, if you're not on your A game every single time, I'm moving on to the next meaning provider. Because we did such a great job as a community at establishing strong institutions in a climate where it was just a given that people would affiliate, and that isn't the case now, I think some of our relational muscles are weak. It's never a problem that we saw a difference. It's what we do with that difference when we see it. It's how we engage in it. I think my ideal is that we make some big bets. I think the flip side of making a big bet is banning one-year non-renewable grants. <laughs> that's a small bet. Now that's not to say that things like Slingshot haven't gotten tremendous things off the ground. I have personally a lot of gratitude towards initiatives that, that take those baby steps. But I'm, I think we're all going to be a call to account, and all of us in this room probably even more specifically, for not taking the big bets that are going to catch up with the realities that Yehuda described. But I think what I really want to see is I want to see organizations, especially legacy organizations, really allowing millennials to have a real seat at the table, an authentic seat at the table, not just like, go get me a millennial, like we're unicorns yeah. in Jewish life, but really taking the time to think through how are we going to work together? How are we going to include millennials? Because millennials, you know, I'm speaking for my generation, but I do think it's very true. We care about issues. We want to be involved. We want to be involved in a real way. And I think that's what needs to happen. 